We got some good injury news on the Sabres. Whew. Tage Thompson's okay. We'll give you the details. Although, the other injury to talk about is a little more severe. What are the Sabres going to do with Matthias Samuelson? We'll talk about it coming up here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Your Locked on Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome in to a Wednesday edition of the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Check us out on our YouTube channel where you can watch the show as well. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of the show brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Sneaky Joe DiBiase coming to you today in an off day for the Sabres. They'll be in action tomorrow against the Dallas Stars. We've got some good news and some bad news on the injury front. The bad news is going to lead us to a much more advanced conversation about Matthias Samuelson and what is going to happen here. What's going to happen with this player? Is it going to be a long anchor of a contract the Sabres are going to have to deal with? Are there other options? What about his play? Has he been, we did this with Tage the other day, has Thompson been as good as we think he has? Do the numbers show that? And the answer on Thompson was a resounding yes. For Samuelson, we'll dive in in a little bit. Not just what's going on with injuries with him, advanced numbers, future for him, options, trades, buyouts. We'll get to it all with Samuelson. But really what I want to get to with him is, has he been as bad as we think he's been? Because there might be some numbers to point to he hasn't been, although it's not going well, to say the least. So a lot to get to on today's show. Sneaky Jody Biasi here. If you want to check out our Lockdown Savers text club, if you want all the injury updates, you want line combinations, you want to just chime in, you want to give us a take, um, or you want a question answered, join subtext.com slash Lockdown Savers is where you can sign up for us there. So check us out on our Lockdown Savers text club. You can follow us on Twitter at Locked on Sabres. I'm on Twitter at Sneaky Joe Sports, or I'm on Blue Sky, too, at Sneaky Joe there. Uh, you can find us anywhere. So let's get to the injury updates, the good and the bad. Let's start with the good, which is the best news you could have hoped for. I was thinking the longer it went, that the less severe it was going to be on Tage Thompson. Um, that was just a guess, and I guess that ended up being – accurate you know it was just a guess but lindy ruff updating everybody on wednesday morning says that tage thompson is day to day and is possible for tomorrow night's game against the blues Whew. capital p h e w phew that tage thompson is going to be Okay, he's going to play. It's a lower body injury. So the fact that he's day-to-day, -day, something's nagging him. We'll see how healthy he looks if he gets back into the lineup. But just for him to not be out any significant amount of time is enormous for the Buffalo Sabres. If you want a more detailed thought laid out on his value to this team right now, how well he's playing, and you missed our last show, check it out. We did a deep dive on Thompson um, and his numbers and some of his play so far this year. But, man, if they got to get through one game without him, that's fine. Like, I think you can get through a game or two without him. But if they had had to go weeks, months without Tage Thompson, I think the season would have been really hard. It would have been really hard to think about this being a playoff season uh, if he's going to miss a significant amount of time. That does not appear to be the case. So that's the news on Tage. Also news on Lukanen. Ukepeka Lukanen who I was dealing with an ailment at practice before Monday's game, then played Monday's game. Lindy didn't think that he was getting through it well, so he took him out and put Levi in in the third period. Lukanen is also day-to-day. -day. It is also possible for tomorrow's game. But to me, Lukanen being possible for tomorrow's game is a little bit different. You can manage Tage's workload even if he plays in the game. You could, instead of playing him 19, 20 minutes, in the game, like he sometimes will play. You could say, okay, we're going to put you in, but we're going to manage your workload. We're going to play you 15 minutes. We're going to, um, 
you know, we're just going to limit the opportunity. If the game gets out of hand, we're going to sit you completely. Uh, if we're up big in the game, we're going to sit you completely. You can you can work with Tage and his workload while still having him be active. Lukanen, he's either going all the way or you're pulling him out. I don't know why you'd want to keep doing the song and dance that happened on Monday where, while well, you put him in and after two periods, he go, eh, he doesn't look right. Let me pull him out for the third. I, I don't think you'd want to do that. So to me, it would make sense that Levi would play against the Blues on Thursday night. We'll see if they end up doing that. The bad news is about Matias Samuelson. Samuelson is going to be out long-term, week to week. Lindy said it's going to be weeks. He said that it will be – it is a um, a strong injury um, is the way he put it, I believe. Uh, it's So it's a severe one. And he's going to be back this season. He's going to be back this year was the exact phrasing, although I didn't see that. Um, Ruff said the severity of Samson's injury is pretty strong. Um, he did say he'd be back this year, but I didn't see a follow-up as to whether that meant the calendar year or the season. I might want to guess because he called it weeks and not months that he meant the calendar year. So my guess hearing Lindy today is that Samuelson will be back sometime in the year 2024, maybe next month uh, at some point, but a long time they're going to be dealing without Samuelson. And, you know, we'll get to coming up how good he's been, but before we get to that, what about Samuelson and these injuries? I mean, it is constant. He has been injured every single year of his career. Samuelson I just, you know, that was that was a question mark about him when they signed him. And it was a bigger question mark about him when they signed him than his play. Was, can this dude stay healthy? Are you willing to commit to him for the long term, not knowing if he can stay healthy for you? And, you know, what he play? Here, here are the amount of pro hockey games that Samuelson has played since he turned pro in 2020. Okay? And this includes Buffalo and Rochester, both combined. 2020-21, that first season, 35 combined games between the Sabres and the Amherst injuries. 21-22, uh, 64 games. All right, that's pretty good. That's the most that you've seen. Um, but he still missed almost 20 games of action. But that's the best you've seen. 22-23, the year the Sabres missed the playoffs by one point. Samuelson, 55 games. That year, missed 27 games. Last season, exactly 41, missed half the year. This year, it's 13 games in for him. 13 games played for him in, and he's he's out. This guy can't stay healthy. And, you know, what's tough about that is I don't know what he's supposed to do. Because if you've got a skilled player that can't stay healthy, you know, you could still find a way to be an impact player without playing of super physical brand of hockey. If you are, the Sabres haven't had a guy like this in a while, but if you're someone that deals with lots of injuries and you're 5'10 and you're a skilled guy, you're a forward, and you want to say, all right, I'm not going to lay out the block shots as much as I used to. I'm not going to, you know, throw a throw the body every time I have the opportunity. I might limit you know, manage my my physicality, my physical game a little bit. I'm going to manage how often I lay out to block a shot. You know, you can you can dial back the physical nature of a game if you're a skilled player. What's Samuelson supposed to do? Samuelson is a physical player. He is a six foot five, two hundred twenty pound defenseman that is supposed to be a big body. He is. Supposed to be a good shot blocker, supposed to be a physical player, supposed to throw the body, supposed to bang around in front of the net, and he can't stay healthy. How does he change his style? I don't think you could do it. I actually, coming into the year, threw out the idea or the theory that maybe him playing on the third pair would actually keep him healthier because... You're, you're kind of managing his workload a little bit, right? You're not asking him to play 23, 24 minutes a night like he did sometimes two years ago when he was a top pair defenseman with Rasmus Dahlin. Two years ago, 22-23, he played 22 minutes and 11 seconds per night on average, 
Last year, that came down a little bit, 20 minutes and 30 seconds. So two years in a row over 20, including year over 22, which is absolutely top pair defenseman usage. This year, I'm like, all right, third pair, maybe fewer minutes, lesser minutes. He could get a, He could stay a little healthier. He's averaging 16 minutes and five seconds a night. His time on ice is more than six minutes lower per night than it was two years ago. Six minutes lower per night. And he can't make it through the first two months. I don't know what you're supposed to do. I think what you're supposed to do is bet on every year. When, when the Sabres are planning out their roster going forward, they have to assume Samuelson's going to miss at least 20 games. You have to write that in ink. That's going to happen. And until he gives them the proof that that's not the case, you have to you have to manage it. You have to expect that that is what's going to happen. It's not his fault, I think. Like I don't I've never heard a bad word about his training routine or the way he takes care of his body. Like I've never heard complaints on that front about Samuelson, but uh, maybe that's a question worth asking. I don't know. I, I, again, I've never heard a murmur about that being a problem for him, that he's like out of shape or he doesn't take his body seriously. But he might, have, he might have to change something. Maybe just change for the sake of change because clearly the dude can't stay on the ice. When we come back, it's been bad for Samuelson this year, but just how bad and is it fair to expect that this is gonna this is gonna be an anchor of a contract for the next six years for Matias Samuelson. What are they gonna do with Samuelson? Get to more on that when we come back here on the Locked On Sabers podcast with Sneaky Joe DiBiase. Today's episode of the Locked On Sabers podcast brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Nothing delivers comfort and joy quite like the unrivaled quality and taste of Omaha Steaks. This year, skip the holiday hustle and bustle and save 50% off gourmet gifts site-wide at omahasteaks.com. Plus, get a $30 reward card when you shop early and score an extra $30 off with promo code NHL. With five generations of experience, they constant, consistently deliver the world's best steak experience and their gift uh, gifting experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easy to deliver the perfect gift with thoughtfully curated gift packages starting at $89.99. From legendary steaks to mouthwatering desserts and more, save 50% off site-wide at omahasteaks.com. Plus, our listeners here in the Lockdown Savers podcast get an extra $30 off with the promo code NHL and a $30 reward card when you shop early. That's 50% off O-M-A-H-A stakes.com and an extra $30 off with promo code NHL. Minimum, minimum purchase may apply. Today's episode of the Lockdown Sabres podcast also brought to you by Select Quote. Select Quote, one of America's leading insurance brokers with nearly 40 years of experience. Whether it's the Stanley Cup, Super Bowl, the Olympics, the world's top athletes get to play in these top level sporting events thanks to one thing. Teamwork and teamwork can also protect your financial legacy and your family's future. Select quotes, licensed insurance agents are the perfect teammates when shopping for customized, affordable life insurance. They can find you the right policy to keep your financial legacy safely in your family's end zone. Other life insurance brokers offer impersonal, one size fits all policies that may cost you more and cover you less. With select quotes, licensed insurance agents work for you to tailor a life insurance policy for your individual needs in as little as 15 minutes. If you are in good health, they work with carriers that could get you same day coverage for up to $5 million, no medical exam required. Head to selectquote.com and a licensed insurance agent will call you right away with the right right policy for your life and your budget. Get the right life insurance for you for less at selectquote.com slash locked on NHL. Go to selectquote.com slash locked on NHL today to get started at selectquote.com slash locked on NHL. Back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Sabres and Blues next up on Thursday night. Check out our text club uh, join subtext.com slash locked on sabers. It's not through that site. That's where you sign up and then through the app, texting back and forth uh, from there on. So we're talking a little Matias Samuelson today. We got good news on Tage Thompson. He's day to day. Lukanen's day to day. Samuelson is going to be weeks. It's a pretty strong severity, was the way that Lindy put it. Um, 
and I think you're probably looking at about a month, I would guess, for Samuelson, but we'll see. Completely up in the air. But it's another injury for him, and it's on the heels, but very poor start to the year. Very poor start to the year. And I've made no defense for him. I'm like, I think he he's drove me nuts. Some of his mental errors, some of the dumb mistakes that he's made, turnovers, losing the puck in his feet. Remember the LA game that constantly gets talked about by the Sabres, whether it's Lindy or Kevin Adams, that they should have won that hockey game, which I don't even disagree with. They outplayed the Kings that night. This was early in the year at home. Remember in that game, Samuelson took a dumb penalty in the final minutes that cost the Sabres the hockey game. So he's not been good. He He's made a lot of individual mistakes. How bad has he been, really? Now, all those plays count. All those plays count. And all those plays are the reason he's been put in the press box. That he was benched multiple games in a row by Lindy Ruff, which would have never happened under Don Granado. I can't remember a single time he was healthy scratch under Granado. Whenever he missed, it was only, always due to injury. The numbers show, though, that he's getting worse results than he should. And this is where a, a brief little bit of positivity for Samuelson, a brief little bit of optimism might be required because everything about him, when you think about him, is negative right now. It's, oh, he's been so bad and he's not even, he's pretty soft. You hear that thrown at him all the time and he doesn't do anything for you offensively. And. He's injury prone, which is true, and he's under contract till the sun burns out, right? All of these things are always said about Samson. It's the only thing you'll hear about him this year. Let's dive in on his advanced numbers a little bit. And, you know, keep in mind, I am not like, I. it's tough for me to tell you the why of these numbers. Like, I like to read these numbers. I like to read about them. I like to try to understand them as best I can, but I'm not creating these metrics. I'm not creating these algorithms. So, you're getting a secondhand explanation from me. Always just remember that um, when I go through some of these numbers with you. But when looking at Samuelson, when I look at two different numbers that stand out for me the most, the two that I like to look at the most, I love to look at expected goals for percentage. And then in this case, goals for percentage. To me, when you look at those two numbers, you kind of get what's expected of you when you're on the ice, given the play to play, and then what actually happens, how lucky to unlucky you are getting in some instances, not always that way. And Samuelson, let's again, I don't want to call this luck because I think this number might be he's making boneheaded plays, horrible boneheaded plays. They're ending up in the back of his net when, when he shouldn't be, though it shouldn't be happening. Samuelson on the year, his expected goals for percentage. The number of goals expected to go in when he's on the ice. More for the Sabres than the opponent. He's at 51.1% expected goals for percentage. So again, like in a very generic explanation here, when he's on the ice, you'd expect that 51% of the goals are going to be the Sabres. So about, about even, about average, but slightly a tick above, um, which is actually pretty good. I mean, for the Sabres as a group, as a total team, of the 20 players to qualify, that ranks 7th on the team. 51.18% is 7th best on the club. What's his actual goals for percentage? This is all 5-on-5, five five, by the way. What's his actual goals for percentage? This year, what percentage of the goals scored when he's on the ice are Buffaloes? And the answer to that question is not 51%. It's 35.5%. That's 19th on the team. The only player worse than that on the Sabres this year is Sam Lafferty. That's it. And Lafferty's expected numbers are equivalent. Lafferty goes 34.8% goals for percentage, 37.4% expected goals for percentage. Samuelson goes 51.1% expected goals for, and then 35.5% actual goals for percentage. So, Read into that what you may. Maybe it is that he's getting unlucky. Maybe it is he's making just stupid boneheaded decisions. And this is just at five on five. Doesn't count his time on the penalty kill because he's made a lot of those boneheaded decisions on the penalty kill as well. But some of your other numbers on the year. The Sabres shot attempts when Samuelson's on the ice. 51.59% is another one. Um, the actual shots on net. 49.3% when he's on the ice. Like, none of these are that bad except for what the actual goals are. 
the actual amount of goals in the back of his net. So again, I think what my takeaway would be is he's been bad. He's been a dumb player, I think, on the ice to start this year. But you should expect that it's going to be better. That's where I'm that's where I'm landing on this. That he's been horrible, but there are there are different metrics to look at where you should expect that it's going to get better. Here's another one. Let's go over to Evolving Hockey on this one. I like to throw those stat cards around that they put together. And this one for Samuelson shows kind of the same thing, that he's not as bad as you think he's been, but he's not been great. So this is looking at expected goals above replacement. Different metric, this one over at Evolving Hockey, which uh, might be even more telling, more context to it. Look, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, look at those far, those bars on the far left. That's those are basically the equivalent of what I was just talking about with the expected goals and the actual goals for goals above replacement. Look at that big red bar that goes way down below the horizon. Look how bad and scary that big red bar looks. And then look at the blue bar next to it. That right there is what I'm talking about. That is the actual goals above replacement. And then next to it on the right is the expected goals above replacement. So kind of another stat that says the same thing. It's going horribly for Samuelson, but your expectation should be right now that it's going to get better. Now, his percentile rank offense and defense at Evolving Hockey, which I've got that up here on as well, 46th percentile offense, 57th percentile for defense. The defensive number is a big drop from last year. Last year, he was in the 78th percentile. This year, he's in the 57th. That's for the whole league when it comes to defensemen. So, you know. My overall thought, again, put it this way again, is that I just think you're going to get better results on the long term when he returns to the ice. But that is not, that should not be assumed. Let me let me also say that. It should not be assumed. And you can't judge his, Lindy can't judge him that way. Lindy, you, you see the boneheaded mistakes. You see the turnovers. you got, to hold him accountable for that. Lindy has done that. And that's going to be the conversation about his contract too. Not about what his expected numbers were. were. That'll be part of it. But it'll also be what actually happened on the ice. And when it comes to that, let's look at the Sabres options with Samuelson. Because everybody wants him out of town right now. How possible is that? it might be more possible than you think. Because in your mind, you're probably thinking, well, big monstrosity of a contract. They're not dumping that. It might be more reasonable than you think. Get to some options with Samuelson and where what I would do when we come back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast with Sneaky Joe DiBiase. Today's episode of the Locked On Sabres podcast brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Get ready to tackle the NFL season all year long, or about halfway through, just a little over halfway, with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5, get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get that hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view life play-by-play, and so much more on the same place where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You get started with $150 of bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Check it out at FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the National Football League. Back here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast, we're talking some Matias Samuelson today as he's going to be out for a long while. So this is probably be the last time we talk about him for a while because he's, he's not going to be playing. Um, a lot of fans are asking, about like what to do with him. Can you do anything with him? Can you trade him? Can you buy him out? Now, a couple of things on this. One, I don't think you could trade him. I don't think you could trade him. I think the time for that is past. I think a year ago, you could have traded him. And there was whispers about that. I never heard anything concrete about it. I never saw it reported anything concrete about that. But once in a while, you'd see, oh, you know, this team, Philly. Philly was mentioned, maybe. Vancouver. Um, this team, this team, they're interested in Matias Samuelson. And Samuelson was a name that the Sabres fans could have even thought of as a trade idea. Um, that day's passed. You're not trading him. Uh, I don't think there's a team in the league that might take that contract right now. Now, 
what I think is likely is to happen by a lot, and even what I would do, is you just ride this out. You know, he's under contract. He was a good player for you two years ago, and you keep going. You trust those expected numbers, and you hope that it's going to get better. You get him back on the ice, and you you continue to plan on him missing games. You continue to have the defensive depth ready to go to replace him. But when he's healthy, you get him on the ice, and you hope for the best. That's what I think they'll do, and that's what you should do. But if you want this for so, if you want this to file away for later, buyout option on Matias Samuelson. It probably would seem impossible because he's only in the second year of a seven-year contract that pays him over $4 million per year, uh, 4.285 to be exact. Actually, 4.285714 if you want to be real exact. He has a complicated number um, or just a long number. He's under contract till 2030. It's a long contract. There's a rule about the CBA that I didn't know until Chris Ostrander um, pointed out to me on Blue Sky, actually, which was that if you were to buy out Samuelson, because he's under 26, you only have to pay one-third of the money over twice as long instead of half the money over twice as long. That's always been the, the, the understanding of a buyout, right? Is you buy a guy out and... You pay him half the money for twice as long. I didn't know this because you rarely see it. I don't. I was looking. I couldn't find the last example of a guy that got bought out in this circumstance. Um, other than the one guy that it did happen with was Nathan Gerby. The Sabres did that with Nathan Gerby in his age 26 offseason. So I think he might have already turned 26 when he had done it. But either way, it was so long ago that it was different CBA even. So who cares? Um, Samuelson is 24 years old and his birthday is in March. So keep that in mind. If the Sabres are ever going to buy out Matias Samuelson, the time to do it is this upcoming off season because you only pay a third of the money instead of half of it. So if they were to buy him out after this upcoming season, his cap hit for it's a long time. Keep this in mind. It's 10 years. He would You would be paying him, and he would count against your cap until 2035. But the cap hit every year would only be $714,000. How about that? I know it's a long time. I know it's 10 years. But $714,000 is nothing. Absolutely nothing at all. And... I know the NHL cap is the most incremental increases ever. It's not like the NFL. It's not like the NBA. It's not where you see these exploding TV contracts and the caps rise at $20, $30 million a year. That's not the NHL. I understand that. But in 10 years, the NHL cap should be by should be to $100 million by then. $714,000? How When am I ever going to care about $714,000 on their cap? The bigger punishment would be you're giving up on a young player who's still only 24 that was a draft pick, second round pick that you paid that had you've seen play well before. You'd just be letting him go for free. But that's the decision. And the other part of it is, do you trust the Buffalo Sabres if they were going to buy out Samuelson and save almost $4 million per year? If, do you trust them to do anything with that $4 million per year? Or do you trust them to just pocket it? That's the other part of it. I don't know how confident I'd be that they bought out, they would buy out Samuelson and then use the $4 million for anything. So that's what you're looking at. But once next season gets completed and then the next buyout window opens, he's 26. So my understanding of that rule that I just learned about today, so keep that in mind. But my understanding of that rule is you'd have one more, you have one more chance to buy him out at the lowest price possible. And then it gets a little bit more cost prohibitive. Just a little bit. So that's the that's the decision making process on Samuelson. My guess is they will just ride it out. They will not buy him out. They will not trade him. They'll continue to play him on the third pair, and they'll cross their fingers that he's able to return to form from two years ago. 
That's my guess on Samuelson. But he's got to play better, and he's got to stay healthy. I think the former is a lot more likely than than the than the second. I think it's much more likely that he returns to form from two years ago than he ever stays healthy on a consistent basis. That's my take as it stands today on Matias Samuelson, who, again, we're not probably going to talk about for a while because it sounds like he's going to be out for a little bit of time here. And in his stead, of course, Dennis Gilbert. And right now, the way Samuelson's played, like I'm not expecting Dennis Gilbert to give them anything less than Samuelson has. In fact, some fans might prefer it because Gilbert's more physical. Gilbert is harder to is tougher to play against, if you will. Um, is he a better hockey player? I wouldn't say that. But the way Samuelson's played this year, I've got I'm not expecting any drop off to Dennis Gilbert in the lineup. Thanks for listening today. Locked on Sabres podcast going to do it for us. Next up, we'll preview Thursday's game between the Sabres and the St. Louis Blues. Name a blue. If you're not like a hardcore hockey fan, the Blues are not a very recognizable team. They've got a couple of star players, though, that they still got that they've had for a little bit of time. That's tomorrow's show. Thanks, everybody, for listening. If you want to check out your next listen, some fantasy hockey talk. Steel and Flip got you covered on Locked On Fantasy Hockey or getting you ready for Bills and Chiefs on Sunday. Joe Marino with the Locked On Bills podcast. We'll talk to you tomorrow here on Locked On Sabres, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.